We're streaming. Oh my goodness. Hi everybody. Uh, my goodness, what a pleasure it is to be with you here on Earth Day. Uh, I'm wearing my Earth Day suit. See, it's like the Earth. It's like a little explosion of Earth. Plus, I'm in Japan, so I look like a walking, talking cherry blossom. I wonder if people will take pictures next to me and go, oh, my God, I saw a cherry blossom. Oh, well. Anyway, um, it is truly a pleasure to be with you. I am uh, really friggin' excited. Oh, look at the little, the little bubbles. Hi. Nice to see y'all. Um, <clears throat> so, oh, goodness, I'm so grateful Earth Day is right now. Um, no day like the present to contribute to this beautiful planet of ours. And I'd be so grateful if during this, if you could, if you could just take a few moments to perceive this beautiful planet and, and perceive the gifts that it offers. You know, and I'm looking out over Tokyo right now and there's skyscraper after skyscraper, high rise building after high rise building, just as far as the eye can see. And um, and it's interesting that, that so few people seem to say, thank you earth, you know, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for the contribution you are. If I would have one favor to ask of you, it would be every morning when you wake up, just acknowledge the earth and go, hey, earth, just want to say thanks. And I'm here. What can I contribute to you today? What can I receive from you today? And also, I was watching a, um, let's see, um, I got a couple easy questions I'd like to ask you. But also, I was watching this um, show on Netflix called Our Planet. If you haven't seen it, please watch it. It's eight episodes, and you also want to watch the making of part of it that I didn't know existed that's in the extra section. It is phenomenal. I mean, not only is it beautiful photography, and they capture some things you've never seen before. They're just so amazing. But what they do on there is they, they talk about how uh, we're having an effect on the planet and, you know, obviously all the creatures on the planet, and they give the statistics for, for how things are changing and species going away because we're just not taking them into the equation but also they show all these places in which we are changing things and making things more sustainable and how it's just working like nature has a way of working things out when we get out of the way and the whole reason why everything is so out of balance right now is because we human peoples humanoids on the planet have been have been acting as though we can just take whatever we want without without using our awareness and without using our consciousness of how can we still get the same result and maybe even a greater result, but also create a sustainable living earth. And my target is to create a sustainable living earth for the next 10,000 years. Here's the thing, if you, would, if you would allow yourself to expand your sense of time. See, most people are looking a week ahead maybe, or they're looking to their next paycheck or their next bill cycle or their next paycheck slash bill cycle, and then the dip that occurs after that. And what that does, it creates a, it, it's, it's looking right in front of your face. So one of the conversations I've been having recently is if we would expand our sense of future and take it from um, a week, a month, a year, two years, if we would expand it out five years, 10 years, 20 years, 50 years, if we would expand it out 100 years, 500, 1,000, 10,000, does that broaden up, broaden out your perspective? And what it's, what it kind of reminds me of is, have you ever been late for something? I know none of you have, just me, perpetually. I always do this. I'm like, I'm always at the razor thin moment. I don't want to arrive more than 30 seconds early. Um, so I usually arrive right on time. Um, but if you've ever been late and you start running around frantically trying to, you know, do things faster, like wash yourself faster, whatever, can I point out that doesn't really work? Okay. You, the five seconds you save washing yourself are going to be eliminated by the eight times you drop the soap. Okay. Just doesn't really work. And this, this thing of looking, you know, 30 seconds to a week to a month into the future. And some people who are like big planners, they look a whole year into the future. Um, it's akin to that. And what I found is, and this is just another useful tidbit for you, you're welcome. Um, just, you know, 
little extra consciousness for you is on those mornings where you're really late or whenever, um, at those times where you're really late, instead of going frantic, what you want to do is the exact opposite. You want to slow down and be more space. And it's almost like you do things more methodically and more present. And if you'll do that, you'll start changing your perception of time, which will change how you interact with time. And so let me tell you where I'm going with this, because you're like, what the hell does this have to do with the earth? Well, um, this sense that we have of only looking a week, a month, a year into the future, if that is the same thing as being frantically running around living your life, whereas if you expand that out to 100, 500, 1,000, 10,000 years, it's like you go, oh. And the thing is, if you're going to create a change for 10,000 years in the future and you start now, all you have to do is change one molecule. And you can create a whole different world, a whole different universe. And what we've been looking at is we must change the whole thing right now. Otherwise, things will not change, except that, I think, is one of the lies that we've been buying. So all the lies you've been buying that we have to change everything now and you can't see what it is that needs to be changed, but you can feel it needs to be changed. You can perceive it needs to be changed. You can sense it needs to be changed, but you can't tell what to change. And you think you have to change the whole thing. So because you can't tell what to change, but you know it has to change and you can't have a big enough perspective. So what happens is now, now you just get depressed because you can perceive it needs to change, but you don't know how to change it because you're trying to change the whole thing right now in the next week, in the next month, rather than going, wait a minute, if I had 10,000 years, what else would be possible? And then you get that space. So everything that doesn't allow you to perceive, know, be, and receive a 10,000 year awareness of future, we destroy and uncreate it, please. Right and wrong, good and bad, pot and pock, all nine shirts, boys and beyond. Now, this also is, it's interesting because this part of the conversation is vital in how we actually start to look at our future on planet Earth. And one of the other things I would ask of you, ask you to write this down, please, is if I were creating a sustainable living and a sustainable living earth for the next 10,000 years, what would I choose today? How would I be? And what would I create? Everything that doesn't allow that, right and wrong, good and bad, pot and pock, all nine shirts, boys and beyonds. Now, if you got invited to this page by somebody who really likes you and, um, or a Facebook friend that you don't even know that it shows up on your feed or something, you're like, I'll check that out, why not? Um, this thing that I'm doing is called The Clearing Statement. We have a website where you can get it explained. I'm just not going to take time to do it right now, but it's a phenomenal way of changing all the bullshit in your life to something else. Okay, it's called theclearingstatement.com. Right in the center of that is something called POC and POD. I like to call them the superheroes of consciousness. Point of, it stands for going back to the point of creation of a limitation or the point of destruction that allowed a limitation to exist, whether it was last week or 100 billion years ago and ask it to dissolve and change. So everything that doesn't allow you to perceive, know, be, and receive the capacity to be aware of 10,000 years into the future, because you can't think that far in the future. This is the beauty of it. Your mind can't figure it out. And a lot of you, I say that and you go, but how, Dade, I don't know how. Actually, you as a being know how. This is how you as a being function. It's just your mind that can't figure it out. And as we say in Access, your mind is a dangerous thing, waste it. Because when your mind is not involved, your being takes over and the awareness of the being that you are and what the awareness is your infinite being has can then be present. So everything that doesn't allow that, everything that doesn't allow you to perceive, know, be and receive that, will you destroy and uncreate it please. Right and wrong, good and bad, pot and pock, all nine shirts, boys and beyonds. So what this is about is us being able to walk on the planet as this space, recognizing that all we may have to do to change something in 10,000 years is to change a point of view. Now, but here's the thing, okay? Um, I've said this for a very long time. Scientists have talked about this um, without realizing what they were talking about. Your point of view creates your reality. Reality does not create your point of view. Uh, I highly suggest also watch the movie Tomorrowland, okay? Because what goes on on this planet is a collective of all of our points of view. And so what happens is in Tomorrowland, the earth is within days of being destroyed.
because everybody has bought into the idea that it will be destroyed and therefore they're creating that destruction. You know, you see the teen, the teen suicide rate on this planet skyrocketing year after year. Why? Well, my sense is because these people who are, these kids who are going into the world knowing they need to somehow create a future, they don't see a future anymore. And they're wondering if we're even going to have a planet to live on. And they see all this destruction going on around them. And they're like, well, if there's no future, I don't want to be here. Bye-bye. And so this, this sum total of these points of view, it's vital that we start to get this. But it's also vital that we take a more aware point of view. Remember this, please. What's true always makes you feel lighter. A lie always makes you heavier. True always makes you lighter. A lie always makes you heavier. So if you're taking a point of view and it makes you heavy, there's a lie there somewhere. Either it's not your point of view because we pick up on stuff from everybody around us, or it's some lie that you bought that you're functioning from. So for example, um, not well, that. let me use this practically. Okay, so scientists are now saying we have about 12 years to reverse the devastation and the pollution that we're doing to the earth. Otherwise, the earth will not be able to sustain us. Uh, if we don't change it within 12 years, the earth, earth won't be able to sustain us. Well, now, so look at that for a moment. If it, A lot of you may have heard this and ignored it, or I'm saying it, and you're like, oh, but I can't, I just can't, I just can't be with that right now because I don't know what to do. Well, this is the exact same thing I was talking about is we think we need to change this in the next five minutes because we're so instant gratification oriented. We think we need to change this in the next five minutes. Otherwise, it's not going to change. But let's look from a different perspective for a moment. So if we get that and we get that urgency, we'll realize also a huge part of what creates that is the collective points of view that we all have. And so you're picking up on everybody else. They're picking up on yours. This is how we create a reality where two or more people align and agree with the point of view. That's where reality gets created. And so how many of you have aligned and agreed with the idea that there is no future? How many of you have bought the idea and think that's actually true? How many of you have decided it's probably true? How many of you can perceive the sense of impending doom that so many people have and you're buying into it? And, you know, you may have like a little doomsday hut somewhere. So, you know, when the world falls apart, you can still live, you know, underground with your family. And that doesn't sound like very much fun, but everything that is. And all the lies that you bought that this is not changeable and all the implanted points of view that it's not changeable, will you destroy and uncreate it, please? Right and wrong, good and bad, pot and pot, call nine shirts, boys and beyonds. So my question to you is, what is it that we can choose that is, what is it that is actually changeable that we haven't been acknowledging that if enough of us got together and went, hey, we're changing this, could actually change it? Everything that is times a godzillion, will you destroy and uncreate it, please? Right and wrong, good and bad, pot and pock, all nine shorts, boys and beyonds. And if we got over running around frantically, wondering what to do and how to get there on time, if instead we went, okay, I'm going to be the space that allows a change to occur. I'm going to, what's, I'm going to be the space that allows a change to occur. When you are space, when you're not aligning and agreeing and resisting and reacting, when you're not doing trauma and drama and positive and negative and fight against and fight for, what happens is you become this space that allows other possibilities to be perceived, to allow, allows them to be known by you and other people, allows them to be received. And that, if we could just be that space, what happens is that's what our planet is, is dying for the lack of. So everything that is times a godzillion, we just run and create it, please. Right and wrong, good and bad, pot and pot, call nine shorts, boys and beyonds. Now, what happens is, so we have alignment and agreement, which is the positive polarity. You align and agree, oh my God, there's only 12 years. And then to try to combat that, now you resist and react. You're like, what can I fight? What can I kill? Who can I kill? What could... Well, that's part of the problem is we're aligning and agreeing, and then we're resisting and reacting rather than going, what space can I be that will change this? What can I choose that will change this? And what can I be that will actually allow our planet to have a future? Everything that doesn't allow that, right and wrong, good and bad, pot and pock, all nine shorts, boys and beyonds. And one of the other things you want to recognize is we live here on this planet and we have this thing called this reality. It's the way everything seems to function here. You know, all the laws of physics and all this sort of stuff. And yet we've got hundreds of thousands of people 
writing books, telling stories about miracles. Okay. Miracles, miracle, or as we like to say in the US, it's a miracle. Okay. It's a miracle. It's a miracle. Somebody'd make a suit like that and put it on a boy. <laughs> I can't wait for walking around the streets of Japan where everybody tries to fit in. <laughs> okay. Anyway, it's just fun for me. I like, you know, when people stare at me and go, what? Anyway, um, you could start liking that too. You don't have to avoid um, people's judgments anymore because every judgment you're willing to receive increases not only your bank account, but your uh, allowance. And it also increases your capacity to be a gift to the world. Anyway, back to my story. So if we recognize that here's this reality, if we look at it now here, so, okay, this works in two ways. Okay. So if you've ever had, um, if you've ever, how do I put this? Okay. So let's do it this way. Okay. So it, when, when, let's say this reality is at this level of consciousness, whatever that is, a lot of you are going, there is no consciousness in this reality. Well, okay. So let's say it's this level of consciousness. And, um, you know, let's say here, somebody functioning around in this trauma and drama and the pain and suffering and all that, and they want to get out of their life. So they create cancer or something. Um, and what happens is, um, from this level of consciousness, something that changes miraculously looks like a miracle. Okay. But from somebody whose level of consciousness is out here, and I don't really believe in levels of consciousness. I just know some people are choosing to be more conscious than others, which means what is consciousness? So access consciousness, we have a definition for consciousness. We're some of the only people on the planet who've actually come up with a definition for consciousness. And it's so friggin' simple. It's where everything exists and nothing is judged. So there are certain people who will choose to judge less. When you judge less, more possibilities come to you. When you judge more, you shut out possibilities because with every judgment you have, every decision, every conclusion, every definition. So let's just say every judgment and every definition and every conclusion you have. Um, somebody said I dropped, am I still on? Okay, cool. Let's make sure. It says live on Facebook. I feel very alive. Okay, you see how I start talking about judgment? And the technology is like, no, no, Dane, no, stop it. Um, just kidding. I, that was, sounded like a conspiracy theory. I was just kidding. Um, I like to kid a lot because um, I like to be happy. I don't know about you, but I like to be happy. Um, so here's the way. Um, for every judgment, every decision, every conclusion you have, nothing that doesn't match that conclusion can come into your world. Let me give you an example. I was in a relationship with a woman many years ago. Um, before access and I decided she was the perfect girl for me and what that created was I couldn't see that she was judging me I couldn't see that she wasn't actually really kind I couldn't see actually that she really didn't like me and the only reason she was with me is because she thought I would make a lot of money eventually um, even though I wasn't then um, that I would eventually make a lot of money and she could you know use me that way but because I decided she was perfect and the perfect girl for me I couldn't see any of this it wasn't until the abuse, basically, the unkindness got so intense that I had to look from someplace else. And I was like, what's really going on here? And then I started using some of these access consciousness tools and I started seeing what was in front of me as I let go of my judgments. And so, and the reason I'm going into this conversation about judgments, and then we'll talk about consciousness a little more after this, but remember, consciousness is where everything exists and nothing is judged where everything exists and nothing is judged. And from my point of view, what is actually required to create a future for our planet is to get out of judgment, period. Get out of judgment and get out of conclusion. And then possibilities come into your life and into your world and into your awareness that you never saw before. Now it sounds, and it is literally that simple. And there are complexities to that because most of us don't realize when we're judging. But let me give you an example. Like if you've ever been around somebody and you feel this weird twist in your guts, that's usually a judgment that they have or you have, or they activate a previous judgment that you have. If we're truly going to create a different possibility for this planet's future, our prime target from my point of view is to get out of judgment because that is what will allow us to perceive other possibilities. Think about it. How many judgments did you have that you didn't even realize were judgments just today? And with 8 billion people doing that, 
sort of nonstop, both good and bad judgments. This is the other thing is we keep thinking judgment is just the bad stuff. No, judgment, the more sticky judgments are the good stuff. And I'll explain that in a minute. So all the judgments you had today that you'd now be willing to let go of, whether they were of you or somebody else or the planet or the planet's future or money or relationship or the people in your life or the people that don't get it or the stupid people or the great people, will you just run and create all that, please? Right and wrong, good and bad, pot and pock, all nine shorts, boys and beyonds. So here's the way this works then is what happens is our, our good, so in the clearing statement is right and wrong, good and bad. That stands for what's bad, terrible, what's, sorry, right and wrong, right, <laughs> pocket mud. Okay, easy for me to say. That stands for what's right, good, perfect, and correct about this, and what's bad, terrible, vicious, mean, and awful about this, meaning it's the good judgments and the bad judgments. So I just gave you a good judgment that stuck my life for three years, and that was that this person I was with was perfect, a perfect woman, perfect for me. Whoa. Do you realize perfect is the most intense set of judgments that exists? Because if there's anything done that's not perfect, what happens is either you can't see it, which is the case with the good judgments, or you have to judge the person for not being what you decided they were, but they were just being them. You're the one who made the decision. Okay. So the bad judgments, we know what that's like, right? Oh my God, I'm bad. I'm wrong. Oh, they're stupid. Oh, they're ugly. Oh, they're fat. Oh, whatever it is. Okay. Um, and that's a judgment by the way. Um, and then the good judgments, ooh, I froze the good judgments are, and you may not want to be on the wire. If you're on my room wireless, maybe, maybe not unless it's still going and we're good. Okay, cool. Forget what I said. we got Lele here helping me out tech wizard. Okay. Um, so what happens is the, the good judgments we have are like that thing of, oh, this person is perfect, or this is the right thing to do, not the wrong thing. Oh, this is going to work out great. Notice there's no question in that. So um, this thing about going beyond judgment, from my point of view, is the biggest thing that we can start to change. And all of us have choice over that. Okay. Now, if enough of us start to get out of judgment, what will happen is you'll start to get lighter and lighter and lighter and lighter and lighter. And then all those people that you always wanted to change, you know, and wanted them to get happy and everything, what will happen is they'll start wondering what you're doing and they'll go, hey, did you cut your hair? Um, have you lost weight? And you're like, yeah, I lost about 3000 pounds of judgments. Thank you very much. I'm actually getting happy now. If we did that, if we two things, if we got out of judgment and we actually chose to get happy, my sense is we that alone would allow us to have the information we need to create a sustainable living earth. Now, let me explain that a little bit further, because some of you are like, but wait a minute, what about plastic? You know, what about, you know, all these things that need to be changed? Well, OK, so let's let's talk about this for a moment. OK, judgment is one of the biggest killers of possibility that there is. In fact, I'd say it's the biggest judgment, uh, decision, conclusion, discrimination. All of those things are forms of judgment. And that's what keeps us in tunnel vision so we can't perceive another possibility. So if we were to get out of judgment, what would happen if we could, if there were enough of us getting out of judgment, what would happen is we would start to perceive possibilities for how we can handle all of this stuff that's going on. So for example, the overfishing that's going on, the pollution that's going on that's killing so many animal species, the deforestation in the rainforest that's going on. See, there are lots of technologies that have been developed, and we all know this somewhere, like we've heard of them, you know, we've heard of ways of getting energy that are 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 cheaper, that, that do not consume, um, but we also have a world in which the judgment is you must hold on to what is, and you must make money, and et cetera, and by the way, money's not bad either. And if you're judging that, you want to pock and pod that judgment because can you change the world more with money or without money? With money, because then you have way more choices available and what you can put that into to create change. Everything that brought up, right and wrong, good and bad, pot and pock, all nine shorts, boys and beyond. So a lot of us, you know, a lot of people have the judgment that technology will save us. Um, I don't have that point of view. I have the point of view that if we get out of judgment, we start becoming as conscious as we are and in consciousness is total awareness of everything, 
we start be getting out of judgment and becoming as aware as we are, we will become aware of the technologies that we can use and create and also the requests that we can make that will change things. So it's not the technology per se, it's the awareness that allows us to create new ways of doing things that is actually what will create the change. So um, a lot of people have this point of view, you know, once again, about plastic. Well, yeah, um, you know, and, and, uh, and if you think about the continent of plastic that's out in the Pacific Ocean and the, you know, the trash and the, the you know, filling up of landfills and all this sort of stuff, but what they do is they focus on the smallest element of it, which is the plastic. What I would like to do is I would like to take that conversation and broaden it to what can we be and do that will change not just the plastic and the pollution, but change how we function with all of this to start creating everything more sustainably. And here's the other thing is some of these initiatives that we have in the world, it's a, it's a great start in a different direction you know, like eliminating plastic bags and doing this sort of stuff, but it is way too small for what we require. It is a good start, but this is the other thing is people, people like to make little changes because it makes them feel good, but they don't want to make a big enough change because they don't want things to change too much. I'm like, okay, now I've spent my, the last 19 years of my life doing everything I can to make the biggest changes possible, being extremely uncomfortable a lot of the time, but then coming out of the other side of it with more space, more awareness, more possibilities, more choices, more creation. And so everywhere you decided that if we change too much, it will be destructive rather than recognize that if we become more conscious, it will always become more creative. And somewhere in your world, you know that consciousness would be the most major change that you could choose. But what if it won't be destructive? What if it will actually be creative? So all the lies you bought that are limiting the change you're willing to be, all the lies you bought that are limiting the change you're willing to create, will you destroy and uncreate it, please? Right and wrong, good and bad, pot and pock, all nine shorts, boys and beyonds. I also have to point out in uh, Japan right now, we're doing a symphony of possibilities class. And there are a lot of amazing people that are in that class right now doing, uh, working on each other using this symphony of possibilities, SOP energy. And there's a, a couple of things that I showed them uh, in the last couple of days that are, it's a way of basically going beyond your mind, if you will, getting, accessing that space that doesn't require all the artificial intelligence systems you call your mind to be in existence. So can you just, everybody around the world just tap in and receive that. And you don't even have to tap in. You just go, yeah, I'll receive it. It's that friggin' simple. This is the whole thing about consciousness. It's so easy. In fact, our mantra in access is all of life comes to me with ease and joy and glory. And we do mean all of life, meaning there's going to be good stuff that happens. There's going to be bad stuff. There's going to be ugly stuff. But all of it comes with ease, with joy and with glory. If you use that 10 times in the morning and 10 times in the evening, you'll start to access more of this space that we're talking about. Because from my point of view, getting to, oh, and how do you do it? All of life comes to me with ease and joy and glory. All of life comes to me with ease and joy and glory. All of life comes to me with ease and joy and glory. All of life comes to me with ease and joy and glory. All of life comes to me with ease and joy and glory. I just did it five times. But if, if you do it 10 times, it takes only twice as long. So um, with this, from my point of view, the gift that we have to offer this beautiful planet and each other is the gift of our spaciousness, the gift of our no point of view, the gift of our no judgment, the gift of no wrongness heaped on anybody else or ourselves, the gift of no rightness, but recognizing that every choice creates something. There's not a right choice, there's not a wrong choice, every choice creates. And if as parents with our kids, if we had brought them up, like I see a lot of access parents doing, which is so cool because the kids who take access, they become the leaders in their schools. It's just amazing. And in their peer groups, I, it, I see it all the time, but their parents have been using access tools to show them that everything is changeable. But also one of the vital differences is they don't say to them, this is bad. Don't do it. This is good. Do it. Which is what most parents impart to their children which is why we have a world that looks the way it does right now. What they say is, look, if you choose this, 
it's going to create this result. Is that the result you want to create? And if we all started looking not from having chosen badly or chosen wrongly, but I chose, what did that choice create? And if I acknowledge what that choice created, what can I choose differently now? We've got to realize, guys, our choice creates. Every choice you make today creates your life that shows up tomorrow. Okay? Every choice you make today creates your life, the life that shows up for you tomorrow. And it's not just tomorrow, actually. See, if you do this thing of making choices that affect 10,000 years in the future, there's a totally different way of looking at the world. Now, I know a lot of you probably are on here and you're like, Dane, give us some solutions for changing the earth. Help us save the earth, Dr. Dane. It's Earth Day. Uh, guys, I just want to point out that is exactly what I'm doing. And But it doesn't look the way you thought it would. Or maybe it does for some of you. For some of you, just long for the ride. You're like, oh, I'll get whatever I can. But this is the thing I'm talking about, about judgment and also projection and expectation. And what happens is if you have a projection of someone or something or an idea that this should turn out this way and it doesn't turn out that way. So you have this projection and expectation and it doesn't turn out that way. Then you reject it and separate from it and go into judgment of that person or that thing, or you go into judgment of you. And it's this recipe for separation. The greatest way of being in the world to actually create the space that our planet so desires and so would love us to be is by not doing projection, expectation, separation, judgment, and rejection. And instead, what will my choice create? What would I like to create? And what can I choose? And so this is a totally different way of looking at things where how do we change the planet? Well, we get out of judgment, number one. We expand our sense of time and, and the future that we're willing to be aware of and what our choice can create uh, based on that. We, instead of running around frantically thinking we need to change everything today, we ask, okay, what can I be and do today to create a sustainable living earth 10,000 years into the future? And then, so let me go back to my conversation about this reality and its level of consciousness. Because this reality functions primarily on judgment of good and bad, right and wrong, there are a few things beyond the rightness and the wrongness that can be perceived and received. Sometimes they still sneak in though. Huh? So I was saying how, so we have all these ways that things are supposed to happen. And yet, you know, we have near death experiences. We have people getting healed from diseases that they shouldn't. We have people going from no money to tons of money. We have people going from no success in relationship to total success. So miracles are sneaking in here. So if this reality is this level of consciousness, so whatever that is, right? Um, you know, when a miracle occurs here, or when something changes massively and quickly here, the person in this level of consciousness goes, it's a miracle. However, the person who's more conscious looks at what just occurred and goes, uh, yeah, I see why it looks like a miracle. Yes, according to this reality, it is a miracle. You are correct. And guess what? It was actually just where you undid your unconsciousness, your unconscious and anti-conscious points of view and your limited points of view so that your being, which is unlimited, which is infinite, could actually function the way that it actually can. In other words, you stop buying the points of view of this reality and now are actually functioning from your reality. Oh, so this whole thing that I'm talking about is us choosing to get out of judgment, which expands our consciousness. I know a lot of people go, no, you must meditate and you must do this. Well, actually, let me tell you the whole purpose from my point of view of meditation. It's to get to the space beyond judgment. And see what happens is a lot of people go, but I meditate so I can connect to the divine. I'm like, cool, if that's what you have to do, that's great, do whatever it takes to connect with the divine. But my point of view is you are the divine, okay? In other words, consciousness includes everyone and everything and judges no one and nothing. Even Einstein said, every molecule has consciousness and our thought at something starts to change it because it is willing to change by our request. Now, if we recognize that we put all these things together and recognize we have this truly miraculous capacity, when we become more conscious, we start to realize that the greatest gift we can give the world is to get out of judgment and become more conscious. 
what happens in that kind of like people who meditate, whatever they do to think they're accessing the divine where well, they're actually accessing the fact that they are divine, but that's just my interesting point of view. Um, oh yeah. And I live it and enjoy my life a lot, but don't tell anybody. Oh, and I live from ease, joy, and glory, but don't tell anybody that either. That's probably not possible without a thousand years of meditation. Um, and oh my gosh, maybe it is. Um, and I'm, I'm saying this because people who have a particular way that they believe is necessary to access their consciousness, or they call it the divine, I would call it consciousness. It's like that, like I said, whatever it takes for you, but what if it could be infinitely easier? So even if you meditate, what if it could be infinitely easier? What if you could be a walking, talking meditation, which is what with access consciousness bars and this tool we have called who does this belong to, to let go of the thoughts out of your head. It's like, that's what people in access start to have. They start to become a walking, talking meditation, even in a city the size of Tokyo with lots of people. Um, and so if we were to do that and be that spaciousness, what happens if we get out of judgment, we go beyond this reality in our awareness. So one of the other things I would like to ask of you all, and at some point I'm gonna ask for your energetic contribution for a few things, because this beautiful planet, my goodness, what a caring, gifting, kind, generous, brilliant, extremely beautiful planet this is. And please recognize the planet has a consciousness. It's almost like a really big, really, really, really big being. That's like, hi, you know, like if you had a friend who was like, I don't know, um, I don't even know how to say it, but if you had a friend that was like one of your best friends, but they were the size of earth, that's earth. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Oh, it's quite the dynamic. Um, that was almost like philosophy. Did you hear that? Okay, cool. Um, so it's like that. I mean, really, there's a being here. There's this consciousness here that we can tap into. And just once a day, if you would, just be like, hi, Earth. Like, Earth is your friend, okay? And you can ask it, hey, Earth, what, what, um, what can I receive from you today that I haven't? What can I contribute to you today that I haven't? And what awareness can I have about what's possible and what it'll actually take for us to create a future? Everything that is, right and wrong, good and bad, pot and pock, all nine, shorts, boys, and beyond. So having said all of these things, um, as you get out of judgment, your level of awareness of what's possible actually expands. Now, if we do that, see, so we have, we have these things that we all know are going on. We have, we have war, we have pollution, we have uh, plastic, um, WPP, you know, we got these three things. We have a lot of things we know, right? But number one, if we got out of judgment of it and we looked at all of them and went, okay, this is going on. What can I be and do that will contribute to changing it? And what can I choose today that will allow this to change right away? Now, if you look at plastic, war, genocide, you know, pollution, all that sort of stuff, it makes no logical sense that you could do or be something that would change it. But does it at all make sense to you that our environment and our outside world is in some way a physical reflection or a physical actualization of what is in everybody's heads? Huh. So if you start to change what's in your head, is it possible that what's outside of your head can start to change? Now, from here, as you start to become more aware with less judgment, this information starts trickling into your world. And one of the things that I see that access consciousness is, so here we have this reality. And what we're doing is we're bringing beyond this reality possibilities and awareness as little trickles into this world. And we've been bringing them in so dynamically that they're like in there kind of working their magic to be able to make things bigger for everybody. Because once again, we all live on this planet together. And if we can start recognizing that and functioning from that, what? can we choose? What can we change? What can we create together? That's never been possible before. And, you know, it's like I was born in the United States, but in no way do I consider myself an American. Well, not in no way. I mean, I really like hamburgers and I like driving fast on, you know, big freeways and stuff um, without people on them. Um, but actually, I'd rather do that in Italy or Germany. Yeah. Anyway, story for another time. Um, but when I say that, it's like, yeah, I was born in the United States, but I'm a citizen of Earth. What if right now you allowed yourself to expand into the space of being a citizen of Earth? 
And there are certain countries like the US, you know, where we're so insular, we feel like we have everything there that one could need. And so only 15% of Americans have passports. That's a sad statement from my point of view, because I've gotten so much awareness of what is available from traveling around the world and the differences in cultures and the gifts that each culture is and the, the gifts that we can all be for each other. Well, what if just energetically you were like, okay, I may not have even traveled, but I'm gonna start exploring the world. I mean, part of the beauty of it is you can explore part of it from your friggin' couch and computer if you don't have the resources to be able to travel yet, but just pick a country and go, wow, I'm gonna learn about this country. I mean, and you'll see, but, but really to get it, so you can learn about it, learn about the culture is what I would learn about and how it got to be what it was, but to, to really get it, you really need to go there and experience it, you know, and, and rather than holding on to the point of view that your way of doing things is right, because you grew up in a country where that's the case, which is a lot of what we're told in the United States, our way is right. And we have big things and we have Costco and we have, we, we buy lots of stuff and we consume and consume and we do. And, you know, if you look at how we grew up as a country, you know, we're like little kids, we're 200 years old. Um, and we have this way of doing things because of where we started, because of the conditions at the beginning, because of all the land that we had, because of the people that we had that came in and were like, yes, we can do something different. Let's create a totally different reality. And we did that for a long time. And then we became normal, average, real, and the same as everyone else. And now it's kind of going, Ooh. well, that may be a point of view, though. If we change the point of view that it's going, blah, maybe it doesn't have to. You know, if we change the point of view, ooh, okay, I'm back. Okay, I was phrasing on my screen. Um, if we change the point of view about that, now here's, remember I said your point of view creates your reality. Look at anything that feels like it's not working and go, what points of view can I change here that will change this? So for example, a lot of Americans have the point of view that it's kind of bleh, going downhill and they don't want to acknowledge it. But what if, once again, what if that's just a collective of people's points of view? Our point of view creates reality. It's not the other way around. Reality does not create our point of view. You can have two people who experience the exact same thing who have totally different points of view about it and they respond to it and their lives and futures are different than each other because they each have a different point of view. Like the people in Hurricane Andrew that were, this was a long time ago, watching a news thing and all these people are, Oh my God, I can't believe God took my house away. I can't believe God would do this to me. I'm so angry at God right now. Blah, 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 blah. And there's one guy, old guy, standing there in his underwear. And they're like, sir, what's your story? And he goes, well, moved down here from the north because the doctor said the weather would be better for my joints. And uh, everything I owned was in that house back there. And he's standing in front of a concrete slab. <laughs> everything I owned was in my house back there. And it's all gone. I didn't have insurance. And um, the lady's like, sir, you must, how are you with this? And she went, eh, I'm okay. I still got me. I mean, wow. Okay. What a miraculous creature. But so he's going to, he's going to go on and live his life and, and be happy no matter what. All those other people are going to have years of suffering. Maybe they never get over it. Remember, it's our point of view that creates our reality. So when I talk about this, you know, once again, please watch Tomorrowland and realize that it's the collective of our points of view that create what's going on. So what points of view can you change for you that will create a sustainable living earth for the next 10,000 years? Everything that doesn't allow that times a godzillion, we just run and create it, please. Right, wrong, good and bad, pod and pock, all nine shirts, boys and beyonds. A couple other questions that I wrote down. I don't usually write down questions, but I wanted you to have these. Um, Actually, I was talking to my friend Gary, and I'm like, Gary, do you have any input for this? And he went, yes. So what is the earth showing you that you keep trying not to be aware of? Everything that is times a godzillion. We destroy and create it, please. Right and wrong, good and bad, pot and pock, all nine shirts, boys and beyonds. One more time. What is the earth showing you that you keep trying not to be aware of? Everything that is times a godzillion. We destroy and uncreate it, please. Right and wrong, good and bad, pot and pock, all nine shirts, boys and beyonds. Now this one. I'm going to run this a couple times and then um, give you some awareness. It just came up when I looked at it. So what is the earth trying to give to you that you do everything to try not to receive? Everything that is. Times a godzillion, we destroy and uncreate it, please. 
Right, wrong, good and bad, pot and pock, all nine shorts, boys and beyonds. One more time, what is the earth trying to gift to you that you do everything to try not to receive? Everything that is times a godzillion, we destroy and uncreate it, please. Right, wrong, good and bad, pot and pock, all nine shorts, boys and beyonds. What I just looked at in that is, so the earth has consciousness, right? The earth has no points of view. Um, even with all the destruction we're doing on its surface, it's like, oh, children, <laughs> come on. You can do better than this, you know? Um, it never gets angry, it never, you know, you think if the earth actually got angry, it could probably just shift the poles instantaneously. We'd all die and it's like, oh, now I can finally breathe, okay? But it doesn't do that. So what is the earth trying to gift us? Well, if you realize that the earth has no point of view, number one, other than the desire to contribute to us, um, do you suppose the earth maybe has, an awareness of how to create a sustainable living future for the next 10,000 years? Would you be willing to ask it every day? Maybe put it on a reminder on your phone? Okay, dear earth, what do you know? And what can I receive from you that I haven't been willing to receive about how to truly create a sustainable future for all of us? Everything that doesn't allow it, right and wrong, good and bad, pot and pock, all nine shorts, boys and beyond. Um, I don't know about you guys, but with some of the changes that I've seen in facilitating and in, in the speed with which people have been willing to receive and with the speed with which they've been willing to get over points of view and soften up and enjoy being alive, I've got more hope now than ever before. And I, it's just, I feel like we're just getting started and I'm actually getting to speak with people and have them have this sense of of these possibilities be available. And for me, it's one of the greatest gifts there is. So um, everything that doesn't allow you to have hope also, will you destroy and uncreate it, please? Right and wrong, good and bad, pot and pock, all nine, shorts, boys and beyonds. Okay, um, so I hope the this conversation has been helpful so far. There's a couple more things I wanna do um, before I go facilitate the fourth day of this amazing SOP class. So if you're able to, I'd like you to go ahead and close your eyes, please. <sighs> I'd like you to take a deep breath in from the top of your head down to the tips of those cute, sweet, adorable little toes of yours. Thanking your beautiful body for being the gift that it is. And also thanking the earth for being the gift that it is. And one more deep breath in from the top of your head down to the tips of those cute, sweet, adorable little toes. Ah, once again, thanking your body. And as you do, just allow yourself to, however you do it, everybody does it differently. However you do it, sort of like connect with the earth. Maybe you have an energy line running down from your heart through, through your legs, whatever, down into the earth or the center of the earth. That's one of the ways I like to do it. And sometimes I like to just expand out. So my being is like the size of the earth or my awareness is the size of the earth or both, I actually like to do both sometimes. Okay, so we're just gonna connect with this beautiful planet and its energy and its space and its consciousness and its contribution and its joy, like the movement of the molecules that it has and its gifting and also its receiving and also its awareness of what's actually possible. Just have a moment with that. And what would be possible if we had never been taught limitation? What would be possible if we had never been taught what the future is going to look like by anybody else? And instead we together could create it. What does the earth know about all of that, that it can contribute to you and all of us right now? And also, where is the source of joy? And would you allow that to begin to unlock? Thank you. Right and wrong, good and bad, pot and pock, all nine shorts, boys and beyond.
And if we together energetically could be, so if us being together energetically is something you would acknowledge, what can we do and be together that creates the space of the possibility for a truly sustainable living earth and living us for the next 10,000 years? If we were going to live for the next 10,000 years, not just the earth, not we live for 70 years or 80 or 100 and die. What if we could find a way to live for the next 10,000 years? If you wanted to, you don't have to, but if you wanted to, what if it's possible? And what if the earth has within it that awareness? And what awareness do you have about that that you have been hiding from you and everyone and pretending doesn't exist? Everything that doesn't allow it, right and wrong, good and bad, pot and pock, all nine shirts, boys and beyond. And would you be willing to unlock everything within your being that would allow you to be the source, the force, the contribution, the invitation to us having a dissolving of barriers between us and possibilities? And would you be willing to ask what beyond this reality awareness and possibilities are available? What beyond this reality acknowledgement can I give myself? What beyond this reality brilliance and awareness and consciousness can we now bring here? On four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Now, as you do this, I'd like to ask you to expand out in all directions so that you're encompassing a space at least the size of the earth. All over the surface and through it so that you can access every country, every culture, every government, every religion, every person, every plant, every animal, every tree, every bird, every stream, every mountain, every ocean, every sea, every lake every blade of grass and every leaf on every tree. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, wow. When I ask us to do this more often, whenever you think about it. Now, when I ask, for a couple things. I'm going to ask us to do some 15s for creating statesmen in the world. And a statesman is someone who is truly benevolent, meaning they do it from a space of good for all. What is good for everybody? Now you can keep your eyes closed or not. We still are sort of in mini ESC mode and not. Um, so a statesman is someone who looks out for everyone. The other thing about a statesman is they tend to have an awareness of future. And most politicians, their only awareness of future is the next election cycle. And so that's the only future they're willing to create so they get reelected. A statesman truly has everyone's interest at heart, is doing the best to create the greatest for all, and has a far longer awareness of future. So let us invite more people like that to stand up. And what we're going to do is some 15s. 15 is change or die. Okay, let's do that all over the planet for anybody in a place or space of power in any organization and gift the possibility for change and difference on 15. And we're gonna do some 14s also, which is an energy of, an energy of, well, it's an energy. I won't say what it is right now, but it's an energy that contributes also. So 15, please. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 15, 15, 14, 14, 14, 14, 
14, 14, 15, 15, 14, 15, 14, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 14, 14, 15, 14, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15. Oh, okay. I guess you can open your eyes now if you haven't already. Um, and so this thing that we're doing and, and, you know, if you've never done any of these things before, you're like, what? And the way it came about was, um, my best friend, Gary would have people standing on the side of the road, you know, begging for change. And if they asked for change, he would say, do you really want change? And they'd go, yeah. And he would pull all the money out of his pocket. And as he did, he went and hit him with this bolt of energy. And he never saw them standing on the same street corner again. Never saw them standing on any street corner again. Um, and we realized that there's this capacity we have to ask for and create change when it's from consciousness. When it's from no point of view, from awareness, and it's from contribution to people we can ask. And so we have all kinds of these ways of doing this in access. Um, and one of the things that you can do if you want to every morning, you do 15s and 14s, kind of like we just did today. Um, and that's part of your part of the contribution that you can be. And it's it's really amazing what I've seen is what we functioning from no point of view and functioning from a desire and a request for more consciousness can create in every aspect of the world if we choose. And in other words, I've seen it change all kinds of different aspects of things for people is what I'm saying. And with enough of us together from this space, it seems to me that if we just get together enough and make these requests, but it's gotta be from no point of view. It can't be from the point of view, oh, it's gotta happen this way. It's gotta happen this way. It's gotta happen this way because it will always backfire if you have that as a point of view, okay? So you wanna truly get to no point of view which is also why I had you tap into the earth and get a sense of it. And that energy that was going and is still going somewhat is something called, I call an ESC, energetic synthesis of communion. And it's a way of, I don't know, accessing the space that exists between the molecules that connects us all. Um, but from this, like if you were to, if you, so I had you tap into the earth using this because the earth has no point of view, but it also has a sense of possibilities. And this is crucial that we get the difference between having a point of view that this should show up and the sense that we have of the possibilities that can show up. Because when we function from the sense of the possibilities that can show up with no point of view, we go and we head in that direction. And then if we're truly doing it with no point of view, what shows up after about three steps, it opens up into even greater because we're not doing that judgment thing of saying it's gotta show up this way. Because when we do that judgment thing, it's gotta show up this way, Usually that's from this limited, it's always when we do judgment limited, but it's from this limited point of view about what was possible and how it could show up that, so we then project out and it's gotta be this way for me to know it's right and not wrong. For me to know this thing is working for me to know that I'm actually doing what I said I'm doing. And there's all these things and it keeps it. And then if it doesn't show up that way, then we go into judgment of us. And then we go into judgment of the fact that we can't create a future and all that sort of stuff. No, it's the fact that instead of Instead of having no point of view of how it showed up, but perceiving the possibilities and heading in that direction, which what that does is because you could, the possibilities you perceive today, if you just head in that direction with no point of view and let the universe show you what needs to be handled, what needs to be changed, what other information is available, what other technology is available to help, all that sort of stuff. If you do that, what happens is you'll take about three steps forward and then the thing that you perceived as a sense of possibilities will get even bigger. But if you do it from it's got to be this way and we must do this and this and this and this is the right way to save the planet. Planet doesn't need saving. We do. Um, this is the right way to do this change. Then, number one, it will never show up that way. So you'll never be right and you'll never realize it's actually occurring. But number two, you're so limiting the universe when you do that because you're saying, universe, you must fit between these two walls that I have decided with the two walls of my head must exist. Fuck, what a way of fucking ourselves up. Everything that is times a godzillion and everywhere you've done it in your life, everywhere you've done it with the future of the planet and everything you've done to actually buy into the crap that we don't have the capacity to create and change, to change the future and create a different future, will you destroy and create it, please? Right and wrong, good and bad, pot and pock, all nine shorts, boys and beyond. And everything you've aligned and agreed with and resisted and reacted to that 
makes you buy into the projections, expectations, separations, judgments, and rejections that all kinds of people have because they can pick it up from other people and then they spout it out to others energetically. We just run in creative, please. Right and wrong, good and bad, pot and pock, all nine, choice, boys and mounds. Every time you hear or see anything about how or, or get the idea in your head that we don't have a future, blah, 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 you go, who does that belong to? Pock and pot all that shit and then ask yourself, what is possible to change here? Here's another question for you. Um, oh, I want to do one more thing. Uh, let me ask this question first because I think it'll help my thing that I want to do. And then I'll let you go. Thank you guys for being on with me this long. I'm so grateful. Hope this has been a contribution to you so far. And a couple other things I want to I want to give to you. Um, and one is this question. What are the infinite possibilities here? Okay. Now, I've been asking this question for many, many, many years. And I didn't realize how much I was still couching the infinite possibilities within the idea of the possibilities I decided could exist. So what this is about is what are the infinite possibilities here? So here we are, remember, here's this reality, here's you know all the stuff here, blah. Um, for anything that you desire, anything you're doing, let's say you're, um, I don't know, uh, going on a date, let's say you're buying a house, let's say you're um, gonna go facilitate a class, let's say you wanna create a class, let's say you wanna write a book, wh whatever it is, not just for really big things, but for anything, you wanna ask what are the infinite possibilities here? Or what are the infinite possibilities for this? And what happens is what that does is that allows you to access the thing beyond this reality. And the universe has been looking to gift to you. You know, it's like you've been asking for money and there's these two little angels flying above you with this pot of gold and they've been waiting to give it to you, but you won't ever ask. And they're like, look, we've solved your money problem here. You know, and finally, after following you for about three years, they're like, fuck it, we're just going to drop it on your head and kill you. Like, ask, dumb, dumb. You know, we have to ask, but we also have to open up to the receiving. This is a great thing to ask. What are the infinite possibilities? So I do that before every session. I do it before every class. I do it before every business meeting I have. I do it before every telecall. I do it just a lot, but I don't do it like it's not a rote automatic thing. I go, okay, what are the infinite possibilities here? And I just let the universe make something greater show up. So what are the infinite possibilities for us in changing the devastation on the planet, changing the pollution, changing the destruction. And what are the infinite possibilities available for us in creating a sustainable living earth and sustainable living for ourselves for the next 10,000 years? Everything that doesn't allow it, right and wrong, good and bad, pot and pock, all nine, shorts, boys and beyond. Now, part of what's embodied in this um, Facebook Live is this energy, this space. Please, 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 please go back and listen to and watch this again. I would be so grateful um, because there is this, this energy in this space. If we be more of this, we be what the planet has been asking us for. Because most people are like this in their heads all the time. They look like this. They feel like this. They talk like this. They look like this. This is most people walking on the planet right now. They're like this. You know, and it's like when you can be this, that's exactly what the earth desires. I mean, what's it like when you go out in nature when nobody's around? It's like, if we be that walking on the planet, we give the earth a taste of its own energy, basically. Can we allow more of that, please? Everything that doesn't allow it, times a gazillion, we just run and create it, please. Right and wrong, good and bad, pot and pock, all nine shorts, boys and beyond. Okay, my beautiful friends, one last thing. It's a 16, which is specifically, and you only do one 16, okay? It's specifically to create a sustainable living earth and the possibilities thereof and to open this shit up. And I'm gonna ask you to recall that thing of being expanded around the earth and allow yourself to expand around the earth again. And here we go, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, and let the earth contribute, 14, 15, 16. Ah. Okay. Uh, wow. That was friggin' awesome. And uh, my headset is dying right on time. Uh, thank you all. Just thank you so much for being on this with me today. And I wonder what else we can 
do and change and create in the future. And please, any points of view, like, like be willing to receive how it shows up, be willing to receive how whatever change we ask for shows up, but please pock and pot all the points of view about it. Please don't let that cloud what it can show up like, because who knows how the fuck this can show up. When the Gulf oil spill occurred, 82 days after that, because we'd been asking, can we contribute anything? Can we contribute anything? Can we contribute? 82 days after the spill, we um, got a yes. We sent out an email to everybody in Access asking them to do, and all we had at the time was the old one, two, three, okay? This thing we just did, only the what we have now is like on steroids when it's an appropriate time. But so anyway, we sent an email out to everybody in Access asking them to contribute and at a particular time on a particular day. We did, and three days later in the New York Times, it said that the oil was disappearing at a far faster rate than anybody expected. And the ecological devastation wasn't gonna be what they predicted. Because what we asked to contribute to was undoing the ecological devastation in the Gulf. And then another um, three days later, they found that there was this bacteria that was eating it on the surface of the ocean. So can we do that, please? One, two, three, four, five. I need to find out what number first. Okay, we're gonna do, huh, you know, I said you only do 116. Well, this is a specific. 16, apparently. And see, they died. Okay, so we're gonna do a, we're gonna do it 16. Or did we just do it? Nope, 16 to undo the ecological devastation on the planet. And then we're gonna go. So you all can enjoy Easter or Earth Day, depending on where you are in the world. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. Actually, we're gonna do a 12, sorry. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12. Okay, sorry, I was a little confused on that one. They feel very similar to me. Uh, okay, my beautiful friends, once again, thank you so much. And, and what can we do and be together moving forward? What can we choose together? What spaciousness can we be? And how can we contribute to each other and the planet in truly creating a different possibility? Listening to this, watching this Facebook Live and listening to it again will open this space more and more and more. So I, I highly suggest doing that. It is a gift that I can offer to you. Um, and thank you for being the gift that you are to the world. Cannot wait to see you next time. Can't wait to meet a lot of you in person someday. And what if you truly being you are the gift, the change, and the possibility this world and this earth require. You are, and thanks for being in the world. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.